Hey, I'm Randy, and you're watching The Cheap Audio Man here at The Cheap Audio Man. We talk about high-value hi-fi home theater and headphone equipment. The Topping LA90 is one of, if not the best, amps I've ever heard. Wait, what? Today's video is sponsored by Surfshark, and before you freak out, if you don't want to watch the sponsored content, skip over it. I'll timestamp it and also leave the logo up so you can just go through the whole thing if you don't want to watch it. Okay, it's okay. It's okay. The topping LA90 comes in at $900. $900 for an amplifier from topping. Okay, I get it. And I think later on we'll talk about this. That's like charging 60 grand for a Hyundai or a Kia. It could be worth it, but just the mentality, the paradigm of thinking just doesn't add up $900 topping. They do sell some expensive DAX and things like that. Let's get into some specs, but first a word from our sponsor, Surfshark. Big thank you to today's sponsor, Surfshark. It's a VPN. What's a VPN? Well, it masks your internet activity, encrypts it. So give yourself a present. Look at that. Run on over to surfshark.deal slash cheap audio man and get 83% off in three extra months. Why do you even want a VPN? Well, I'll tell you why. If you frequent coffee shops or McDonald's that have open Wi-Fi, you may want to protect yourself if you're looking at your bank account balance. Fire up the old Surfshark VPN and you have peace of mind when you see that you're overdrawn on your checking account and you can't afford any cheeseburgers. If you want to watch something cool on Netflix that you don't have, but they have it in Mexico or Spain, you can open up and uh, access a server in Mexico or Spain and then watch whatever you want to watch on Netflix because they have servers in over 95 countries. If you have an app or a website that is blocked because of your location, well, just sign in. Guess what? Now it's not blocked because the internet thinks you're somewhere else. Surfshark.deals slash cheap audio man. Save 83% off and get three extra months all free. Power ratings, 110 times two into four at 10% THD. 90 watts at 1% THD. For an 8 ohm speaker or 8 ohm nominal load, 65 watts times two at 10% THD and then 50 watts times two. 50 watts is nothing to sneeze at. I would assume these are accurate statements because topping is really, really, really into measurements. So they're not gonna be saying anything that this doesn't actually mean. Now for bridged mode, you will get 220 watts times one at eight ohms at 10% THD. Here's the thing, when you bridge this, you can't have anything below eight ohms. Probably get away with a six ohm speaker, but if you're not gonna get away with a four ohm speaker that dips below four ohms on this amplifier in bridged mode. On the front, pretty simple. Big volume knob in the center, and it's actually built pretty well. Selector switch for the three different analog inputs. We'll get to that here in a second. And then you also use the selector switch as the power button. Then there's three LEDs to tell you which analog input you're on. Looks good. The sides are cool. The sides have a big heat sink. Pretty generic looking, but it kind of ties in with the rest of Topping's line. Well, let's not talk about that. Let's talk about what's on the back. On the back from left to right, three analog inputs. Those analog inputs are only, listen to me, if you take one thing away from this video, take this away. Those analog inputs are only TRS and XLR inputs. No single-ended inputs of any kind on this amplifier. So there are three. You can use a TRS in the middle or an XLR kind of goes around the side. This looks very similar to some professional style amplifiers. There's three of them. One, two, and three. 
then the speaker outputs, and then there's some dip switches. Fixed or variable volume. I actually found this useful. I put it into fixed volume, so it's just a power amp. Next to that, you have stereo or mono. So if you're bridging this, put it into mono. If you're not, leave it in stereo. And then there's two gain settings, a low and a high gain. I think the low gain is 19 dB or, or whatever. And then the high gain is higher than 19. I didn't really need to put it into high gain. Although when I was comparing it to some other amplifiers, there was definitely a level disparity. So I did put it in high gain. Either way, it's there. Then you have a 12 volt trigger input if you want to turn it on. Then the power input, which is a three pin power input. Let's talk about power. This, this is the power brick that comes with it. Prepare yourself. It looks like a, almost looks like a carton of cigarettes. 64 volts. Oh my. Beefy power, power brick. Okay. So here's the deal. If you don't like power bricks, then this isn't the amplifier for you because there's no internal power supply. This is it. This is how big it is compared to a tape measure. I can measure it, but I won't. This is how big it is compared to a microfiber cloth. And this is how big it is compared to a 1 16th inch drill bit. As you can tell by the comparisons, it's huge. So Topic has a different power supply. It also has a different way of a, attaching, affixing, connecting said power supply to the actual amplifier. And I think they're doing something special with the power supply. I think there is a way that they are figuring out how to lower the noise, lower any type of issues with power supply connections, because this thing sounds amazing. And from what I understand, measures amazing as well. So why don't we do that? Why don't we talk about how it sounds? I hooked up the Sony SSCS5s to this. I know, I don't care what anybody says. That is one of the speakers that I know the best and it does scale with better electronics, for sure. On the front end of this was the Sabage A20, A20D. It's a balanced deck. The reason why I used a balanced deck is because there's balanced connections on there. I compare this directly to, I mean AB this to a pair of Emotiva A1 monoblocks, as well as the Schgit Vidar amplifier. In a word, this sounds brilliant. Clean, soundstage is huge, imaging locked on. Shockingly awesome. My mind is blown. I can't believe how good this amp is. This probably is the best amplifier that I've heard. From a cleanliness standpoint, really from any standpoint. Sound signature is full. They put more fullness, full bodied nature. They injected it into the Sonys, which sometimes can be a bit lean on the bottom. Vocals were as clear as I've ever heard them ever heard them and they were a little bit more forward than the other amplifiers that I listened to or compared this one to. Top end was a little bit more relaxed but equally as detailed. So there was no emphasis on the top end that didn't seem unnatural. This amplifier is doing things that I just haven't heard before and that is extreme clarity, extreme detail, extreme instrument separation, extreme imaging. The sound on this amplifier, for me, with the experience that I've had, and I've listened to a few amplifiers at this point, this sound is flawless. This is a flawless sounding amplifier. It is not a flawless amplifier though. Why only TRS or XLR connections? I don't know. I think Topping knows though, and I think between using balanced inputs and their implementation of their power supply. They're getting performance out of amplifiers, this one and the PA5, which is a class D amplifier using Texas Instruments 3255 amp chip, which is my favorite class D amp chip. Those amplifiers actually sound pretty similar, but that amplifier used the same power supply connection and it also used only TRS connectors. So, what Topping is doing, I think, is designing around balanced inputs and they are designing a very capable, maybe the most well-implemented power supply that anyone's ever done, you know, from these companies from overseas. I think that's why there's no RCA inputs on this. I could be wrong. I'm not a designer. But if I had to guess, I think it's because it impacts the performance of the amp or how the amp measures because I think Topping is 
hyper concerned about how their amp measures. In this case, I think it measures well, I don't know. It sounds so good. But what's going on here is I think Topping is designing around, I think they're so concerned with measurements that they're designing this to measure well in certain application. So outside of that application, well, you can't, you just can't use it. Now, I guess you could get some type of XLR to RCA, but then you have two signals and you're getting rid of one signal. So if you're a single ended person, unless you're using some type of switcher or some type of preamp, you're not using this thing. You're looking at some pretty high end stuff. I think the most affordable stuff is going to be the Schitt Freya S. I think that comes in around $600. So if you want to use a preamp because you don't have a DAC that has balanced outputs or you don't have a DAC that has balanced outputs and a volume control. So the appeal of this amplifier is for people that are purely interested in the utmost performance and they have XLR input, balanced input. I mean, what are you gonna do if you wanna put a phono stage on this? There are some balanced phono stages out there, but they're not common at all. One of the other gripes about this is, and I guess it's not really a gripe, I think it's a strategy. They are putting out products that fundamentally only work together. So if you get the PA5, which is a speaker amp, I think it's $250, $300, it goes with the Topping E50 because the Topping E50 has TRS outs. Interestingly enough though, it also has RCA outputs. Anyway, the PA5 only has two TRS input, so two balanced inputs. Makes sense, they're the same size, they go together. A lot of companies do that. With the LA90, I think it's supposed to go with the D90, obviously, or D90SE or whatever, which is fine, but I didn't love the D90SE. I thought it was extraordinarily overpriced for what you're getting. And then there's another weird thing. Why the three analog switching on here? So this is kind of like an integrated amp because you have some type of switching, but all of those are balanced inputs. So I kind of understand what they're doing here because they're trying to match this with the other, with the other 90 line. But why would you alienate other people? And I think the reason why you'd alienate other people by not including single-ended RCA inputs is because there is something that would, I think you'd lose a little bit of performance Is that if that was the case. If it's not the case, then we should e equally be outraged because Topping has just given us the big <clears throat> go pack sand with not including single-ended RCA. So do I recommend this amplifier? Absolutely, it's shockingly good, shockingly good. My mind was blown. I was super blown away. Astonished. Jaw-dropping performance. Anyway, do I recommend it? Yes, because I think it's worth every penny of $900. I really do. And I'm surprised I'm saying that. But I'd only recommend this for a very, very specific customer. One that only has balanced stuff, maybe a balanced preamp, or someone that only has a balanced DAC and has volume control. If you wanna run single-ended into this, you're gonna to have to get some type of switcher or you're gonna to have to get something like a Freya that you can bring in RCA and then output XLR. To be fair, when I was comparing this to the Emotiva and the Vidar, I was single-ending, I was connecting those amplifiers via single-ended RCAs because neither one of those amplifiers has an XLR input except for the VIDAR, but that's in mono mode. The really good comparison is between the LA90 and the Schitt VIDAR. I thought the VIDAR was a little bit more exciting on top, but the topping had a bit more vocal clarity and a little bit more fullness on the bottom end. The sound of this thing is, I know, it's cliche, unbelievable. Like I couldn't believe how clean this thing was. It was, it was really good. And the problem is it's $900 and there's no RCA inputs. That's it. That's the problem. You fix that problem. Game changer. Like Topping just put every amp manufacturer on the planet on notice. If you can put RCAs on here and bring the price down a little bit. Even if you don't lower the price, if you can get RCAs on here and you could somehow figure out to get even close to the same type of performance. Wow. Wow, but as it is, you don't have that. As it is, Topping is designing products to go with other lines of their products, which is smart, but if you don't include other things, 
like an RCA input, then it completely loses the value outside of your core customers. And that's cool if that's where you're starting. But if you want to sell a lot of amps, put some RCAs on here or figure out how to do it. And don't make somebody go out and have to buy some switcher box. RCA and XLR. I don't know how to do it. I'm not a designer. I'm not an engineer. But I bet you can do it because you guys know how to design products that measure extremely well. And in this case, sound phenomenal. So if you want to support the channel, you can sign up for Patreon, patreon.com slash cheap audio, man. Every Sunday night, we have patron only Zooms. We have a patron only Discord. We have a patron only Facebook group. We do patron giveaways. You can also use the links in the description. Those are affiliate links. Apos sent this in to me. So I will link this over to Apos. They have 45 day return policy. You can also sign up for Amazon Music or Tidal Music. Links in the description. Click on the link. Sign up. Even if you quit, I still get a couple of dollars. Okay. So don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu. Maybe buy the topping LA90 only if you have balanced gear, though. And fill yourself with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Audio Man. Mm -hmm.